Hi there, my name is Jenny Elliott and I'm the Head of Events at Fitwise Management. We identified a gap in the market for an affordable virtual conference platform and so we developed Fitwise eConference. I wanted to create this short demonstration of the eConference platform to give a thorough insight into the features and options available to you and your event. Throughout this demonstration, I'm going to refer mainly to our own e-conference, which is the Virtual Conference Conference. However, I'll also dip into a dedicated demonstration site, which we created. It contains quite a lot of dummy material and content, but I'll use this to highlight other features which you may wish to utilise for your own event. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the process. This is this probably looks quite familiar. It's the event homepage or registration site, but I'm not going to look at this in any great detail I, as I want to focus on the e-conference platform itself. However, just to explain that delegates are directed to this page, a page like it, and they will register here like they would for any other event. You may or may not require us to develop a registration site but in many cases, this is included in the e-conference package anyway. For this event, we are running it as a rolling program with recorded sessions, so people will register, then receive their login details for the e-conference site. Timelines will work differently for each event. I'll just touch on this section very briefly. Something that we did for our event was that we introduced a virtual delegate bag. It comes in the form of an email to the delegate and it is a really good opportunity to generate income for your event if that's something you're looking to do and it can include things like links or downloads and sponsors can essentially put any content they like into the virtual delegate bag. This was really well received for um, our event. People thought it was quite a nice touch and a little bit quirky. So I'm now going to look at the virtual conference platform itself. So as I said before, delegates would receive their login details. I'm already logged in here. The colour scheme, theming and branding are event specific, so can be adapted to suit your own event. We've included a brief welcome video, as we think this is a nice touch, but it's completely optional. I'm going to just play this so that you can see what I mean. Just to mention one thing, uh, because this is a recorded session that I'm doing, you may see the video a little bit out of sync, but in reality, that won't happen when you view it, uh, view it on the website. Hello and welcome to the Virtual Conference Conference, an essential guide for those considering running a virtual conference. I'm Neil Watts, and the Managing Director of Fitwise Management Limited, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this e-conference, which has been run on the Fitwise e-conference platform. So it essentially is the equivalent of maybe a chairman's welcome at a physical conference. We've received a lot of feedback to say that our platform is easy to navigate and is very user friendly. Rooms or halls are event specific. However, for this event, we have a single conference room and an exhibition hall. There's no limit to the number of rooms you can have. And for educational events that have scientific posters, there is also a poster area feature, which I'll show you on our other site in a few minutes. I'm going to head into the conference room to start with. And this is probably a good time to talk about how the option of running a live e-conference works. There are various options. Some clients like to run an event on a specific day and time, and run it as a live event. This can often be about creating a buzz around the event, like it does on the build up to a physical event, and everybody will log in and congregate for the conference at the same time. However, a little bit of a trade secret here, we strongly recommend pre-recording all speaker presentations to avoid any technical or connection issues, which are likely and unavoidable. These sessions would still be played as live at their allotted time, so the delegate experiences the event as if it was truly live. It is then possible to run live Q&A sessions. 
speakers are asked to be available on the day and are brought in by video link using Zoom or a similar platform. Delegates can submit questions via the chat function and speakers respond on a screen using their video link. A chair and one of our AV technicians would be on hand to feed the questions to the speakers. After this live date, the e-conference can still be accessible to delegates to access for a defined period, a little bit like catch-up TV. The alternative option is to simply run the event as we have here. All sessions are accessible for a period of time for people to view at their leisure. This is a real advantage of a virtual conference. For multi-stream events, delegates don't have the quandary as to what sessions to attend. They can, att uh, they can technically attend them all. We have run a fairly small event here with just a handful of speakers, but you have the option for multiple, multiple conference rooms or streams. I'll just go into this presentation so you can see that quite a nice feature is that you can also, with speaker's permission, have a contact the speaker function. So no actual contact details are disclosed, but the, the delegate can contact the speaker directly to ask any questions. And you can see you can include things like biographies and, and images. This first presentation in our conference program shows a good example of a speaker that chose not to use any slides. So it's essentially a head and shoulders shot. The alternative, of course, if a speaker uses slides, then it would um, be viewable like this. So you have the head and shoulders shot of the speaker and their slides will run as they did when they uh, recorded their session. I'll just play a few seconds of this so you can see what I mean. Hello, my name is Martin Nichols. I'm the MD of ESW Solutions Limited. We're an AV production company formed around 25 years ago. We've worked alongside Fitwise for around 15 years, providing their audio visual support for the majority of events that they run. Right about eight years ago, so again, if that video is slightly out of sync, it, it, it's only because I'm recording the session. It, it doesn't appear like that in, in reality. It's all very smooth and very professionally edited. Unlike many other platforms, we use AV technicians to record speakers' talks. And there's the ability to pause and edit when necessary. We, before we created this platform, we had experience of using other platforms that essentially you purchase and then you, you almost run yourself. So there isn't that AV support there. With our AV technicians, speakers have that flexibility of re-recording a session if they weren't particularly happy with it. If they stumble part way through or they want a section edited, then that's absolutely fine as well. The, platforms that we've used previously, you do not have that flexibility. If a speaker maybe stumbled 25 minutes into their session and said, oh, I'd like to start again, they would literally have to start again and do the whole thing, whereas we are able to edit if at all necessary. I'm going to return to the homepage now. How to recreate delegate interaction is a major thing that people want to know about, and this is achieved in a number of ways. We have a chat function, and this is something that people seem to really enjoy and participate in. You can see here that under speaker presentations and even in the poster areas, you can have the chat function and it essentially works almost like social media. So you can have interesting discussions, people can respond to one another. There, this is monitored in the background, so you would have um, somebody, it could be ourselves at Fitwise or uh, an appointed person from um, your own event to manage that so that any inappropriate comments or things like that can, can be deleted or reported. 
Delegates can also create their own playlist, which is quite a nice feature. This session here is already added to my playlist, but you simply just click on that button and then you can view your playlist here. This is a really nice feature because for much larger events that have multiple streams, delegates can essentially pick out their own interests and create their own playlist so that they have them there to, to view at their leisure. There's also the attendees button, which is a really nice feature. No details are disclosed here, so it's fully GDPR compliant, but delegates could contact each other and that links to somebody's email address and they can choose to respond or not respond. And it's just a, a really nice feature that has been um, really well received. So at this point, I'm going to head into the exhibition hall where the delegate interaction continues. Some of the exhibition features include a callback button. I'll show you that in this example here. This is a document that we provide to our potential sponsors to show them the different options of the exhibition hall. This is the callback button here and it can be linked to any one that you appoint uh, to be that contact person. There's also the opportunity to include a private meeting room link and this is facilitated through Zoom or similar platforms and it works as a private meeting room if that's the way that you would like, well your sponsor would like to run it. So if the event is being held live they can have somebody waiting in that meeting room if you like and there's also a waiting room feature in Zoom, which allows people to almost be in a queuing system if they'd like to speak to anyone privately. This can also be adapted for any events that aren't being held as live, and this, the company may wish to put in times and dates when somebody will be manning that room um, so that people can dip in and out of that meeting room to discuss things face-to-face -face via video link with the exhibiting company. Something else that we have discussed with different sponsors is the opportunity to have their own exhibition hall, if you like. So just to show you what I mean, we obviously have our conference room and our exhibition hall. You could have maybe a sponsor's dedicated room and they can do with that room what they please. So that's probably for a, a, a much larger sponsor, but it's a, a really nice option to give people. We found that companies and sponsors are definitely on board with virtual events. It's uncharted territory for some and we have a responsibility to put time and effort into explaining the benefits and ex um, the extent of which can often surprise people. In addition to the more obvious sponsorship and symposia opportunities, there are some key benefits to sponsors. Delegate numbers can be higher than that of a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, and there's obviously the scope for unlimited places where at venues you can, there's often a cap on numbers. There's a greater window of opportunity to engage with delegates as the site can remain open for long periods often weeks or months rather than just days. All delegates can be contacted via the attendees button as I've already explained and this is a really nice way for exhibitors to maybe contact individuals without any contact details being disclosed. There's also extensive cost savings on travel and accommodation and this is something that although may seem obvious is something that is um, a really good thing to discuss with potential sponsors. The layout and format of the exhibition hall is very adaptable. I'll just go back into the examples that we have here. Depending on the level of the sponsorship opportunity um, that that sponsor wants to take, they could maybe have obviously their contact details, they could have the callback button, the video uploads, the free text area, which is almost like an editorial, and then a number of different company photos. 
Um, we've just written here that there's a maximum number of four for this particular sponsorship opportunity and package. I'm now going to just dip into the other demonstration site that we created. As I said, this is a completely spoof event and it just really highlights some other features that may or may not be applicable to some events. So this is what we've called the Digital Annual Conference 2020. We've um, given it quite a similar feel to our other demonstration site. Um, however, you'll see that there's a conference room and a parallel session room here, as well as the exhibition hall, but there's also a poster area. So I'm just going to dip into here just to show you how this would work. Just to mention also, you can have sponsors logos, you can have these as rotating logos as well as sliders across the top of the screen, which is quite a nice feature on some sites. So this is the poster area, any blurb or any images are completely adaptable for the event. Posters can be organized as they would at a physical event and be organized maybe by topic. And there are no limited numbers of posters. You can essentially have however many um, are accepted for your event. We just have a handful here to, to show you as an example. So the layout that we've gone for is the title and the poster number and the abstract that's been submitted along with the author details. To view the poster, we go into this page and you can view the poster here. And what's quite nice is that when you click on the poster, there is the opportunity to zoom or even save the poster so that people can look back at this at their leisure. Again, the chat function is also here. So it's also always quite a nice area. Um, I always think within a physical conference, the poster area always seems to generate a lot of discussion and can often be quite a, um, a hub for people to meet. So we would like to encourage people to really try and recreate that discussion um, on the e-conference platform. It's also possible um, to, if you're running things like poster talks, it's also possible to include maybe the a speaker presentation, you know, whether it's three minutes, seven minutes, something like that, depending on the format of your event. And that can be embedded into this page as well. So they would have a present short presentation to accompany their poster. And that's something um, that's quite nice to do. Posters can also be included in playlists. So if I want to view this later, I could add it to my playlist and then it's listed here. So I could have a combination of actual speaker presentations as well as posters. Some other features which um, I've maybe not mentioned yet are things like the search function. I'll actually go back into the posted area because this might be an area of where the search function is particularly useful. So you can search the room here by the day, the subject, the speaker name, or even using keywords. The website is also completely mobile friendly. I hope this has given you a better understanding of the Fitwise eConference platform. If you wish to know more, you can contact me directly at Jenny at fitwise.co.uk and I'd be happy to discuss this again with you. And thanks very much for listening.